Hey everybody and welcome to the Bullshit Party. And in this one we're gonna be taking a closer look at the newly released Bravado Gauntlet Custom. First of course we need to buy the car and for that we go to Benny's original motorworks. As you can see here we have an example of the stock vehicle and the customized version. The original Gauntlet Classic is one of my favorite cars in the entire game. As you know I really really like my muscle cars. So I guess let's see how this one stacks up against it. We're gonna be testing out the performance of the car, handling, acceleration, top speed, etc. As well as seeing what we can customize on it. After all, the fun of having a car is making it your own. And through the magic of editing, the car is right here, and this is the original Gauntlet Classic. And as I showed in the beginning of the video, it costs $615,000. This car has everything necessary for me to have fun in the game. Awesome sound? Check. Great look? Check. Sloppy, slidey tail end that always goes out in corners? Check. I'm telling you, it's a perfection. And yes, there was a hint of sarcasm there, but I really do like the car. It's very well balanced for what it is, and oh my god is it beautiful. And I'm really interested to see what the custom version is gonna have over this. Or are we just gonna be throwing our money away for a lesser car? Well, knowing myself, definitely wouldn't be the first time I'd be throwing money away, so let's see. And the first thing we do after we arrive at Benny's is, of course, upgrade the car. 570,000 might seem a little bit steep, but it is what it is. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely different. Let's do a 360 of the car, and uh, what I can see so far is that only the front end changed. More on the exterior in a little bit. First, we need to upgrade all the performance options. And as I'm going through the performance options and looking at the car in the background, I can't help but notice that the inspiration for this car, at least in my opinion, is the 69 Charger Daytona. Or maybe it's the 70 or 71 Superbird. I don't know for sure, and we have no way of confirming it since Rockstar doesn't release that information, but I'm curious to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And with that, we're finally up to customizing the car, and the front bumper is the first thing that we can customize. And as you can probably tell, there isn't much in terms of variety here. So far, I feel like my money is well spent. Even though we have a lot of options, I don't like any of them, so let's go with the least stupid one. The rear bumper is definitely better, with quality being the leading factor here, not quantity. And here we have something new, the chassis option. And since it's an old school car, an antenna definitely has a place on it. Next up we have the rear covers, a couple interesting options. Roll cages, I don't really like them, and this car is no exception. So we're gonna go cageless. The sun strips, I don't think they add anything more visually to the car, so I'm gonna pass on them as well. And we come to the first category that I'm actually very happy with the choices in. We have a plethora of exhaust options for this car, both side exhausts and normal rear exhausts. Something that I want to point out here is that if you choose to have a side exhaust like I eventually did, your car isn't gonna have the tailpipe cutouts for the original back exhaust, like many other cars do. The fender options are pretty okay, nothing spectacular, but nothing horrible either. I don't really like the rear fender options, so I'm just gonna go for the front ones. And in my opinion, the biggest missed opportunity here. The headlight covers could have been so cool to customize. Instead, what we can do here is choose between primary and black mixes. At this point, I feel very happy that I invested over 1.3 million dollars in the car. Definitely not bitter. Not at all. Going into the hood options, we have three different categories here. The nose accessories, just like most things we've seen so far, are just a joke. This category would have been better labeled extra piece of plastic on the bumper, yes or no. I can't complain about the hood latches, we have a good variety, and after all they look cool. But I'm sure you can tell I'm getting more and more sour the more I customize the car. Let's just say it's not a coincidence that I haven't done Benny's videos before. I used to think that the mods here were completely overpriced and not really worth what the asking price was. Anyway, me bitching aside, we have a good variety of hood options here. And I think that what I'm going for with the car, the twin intake hood, is gonna be perfect. And since this is a Benny's vehicle, we of course can upgrade the entire interior of the car. If it's worth upgrading, well, that's a whole different question. As you can see, all four options are hovering around $30,000. So regardless of which one you choose, if you want to change the interior of the car, it's gonna set you back $30,000. Now, as you can see on the top right hand side of the screen, I'm not hurting for money, but $30,000 is still $30,000. Especially when it's for interior decorations that nobody's gonna see or notice. And yes, I know, I know, we've spent 50 so far, but so what? Haven't you heard of a hypocrite before? 
And we are continuing our spending spree on the doors, the seats, and basically every useless piece of junk and trinket that you can do in the interior of the car that you're not gonna be able to see or notice anywhere. And as I'm going through the cookie cutter option for the steering wheel design, I just wanted to remind you that making this video takes a lot of effort. So if you like what you see and you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on. The rest of our stay at Benny's was sort of uneventful, well except for the wheelie bar, so I'm gonna catch up with you as soon as we leave the workshop.
And over 1.5 million dollars later, this is what we have. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of the car? Do you like it, hate it, somewhere in between? Give me a number between 1 and 10, 1 being horrible, 10 being awesome. I believe this is my first car in GT Online with a wheelie bar, so I'm really excited to test it out. And to be honest, that's pretty much the only thing that I'm really excited to test out on this thing. But maybe I'm wrong, let's see. And that animation right there was just superb, the way the wheelie bar clipped into the road, perfect. As you can probably tell from my sarcastic tone, I'm a little bit ticked off at this. But let me elaborate so everybody can understand. The Gauntlet Classic Custom, what we have here right now in front of us, is a fine car. It handles fine, drives fine, top speed's fine, acceleration's fine. But that's sort of the problem, isn't it? We took something that many people would consider to be muscle car perfection and we made it this. This is like making the C2 Corvette into a C5. It's like making the 67 Mustang Fastback to a Toyota Camry. Well, maybe not that bad, but you see what I'm saying. And of course, this conversion of something great to something eh is gonna cost you. As I said a little while ago, there's nothing wrong with the car. But when you can have something like the Hellfire or the Beater Dukes for less than half of what this car costs, well, sort of makes you think. But back to the car, yes, this is what over 1.5 million dollars is gonna buy you in terms of a muscle car. Now, I'm not saying that I feel ripped off. I'm just saying that probably Rockstar right now is running to a bank somewhere. Oh, and laughing while they're doing it. And the last thing that I would like to show is something that I usually showcase in the beginning of the videos. And that's the interactivity of the car. Great, we have two doors opening, a trunk, and the hood doesn't open for some reason. I can only imagine that it's the hood that I chose, it's not something typical, but it is what it is. Hopefully this video was informative to you, hopefully it helped you make a decision if you want to buy the car or if you want to buy something else. And if that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like, it really does help out the channel a lot. If you're not yet a subscriber and you're still watching, well, good to have you. Hopefully you are gonna click the subscribe button and become one. That'll be all from me for this one. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. How appropriate.